Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and show you how easy it is to set up your map with points of interest and prefabs to fill those. So the first question is, what's a point of interest? Well, points of interest are actually a really broad category. It could mean almost anything. So it just depends on the use case. In our case, we talked about wanting to make this game in such a way that it's more enticing for players to go out to the park and see some nature. So in our case, a point of interest is going to be a park. How do we add that to our map? Well, Mapbox has made that really, really easy for us. Click on your map inside of your location-based game prefab and scroll all the way down to the visualizers. Now, we discussed these a little while back and how important they are and how cool they are and all the features that they have. And when we discussed that, we took a look at this buildings vector layer visualizer that's built by default for us. Now that we've seen that, let's add one. I'm going to left click on the name and we're just going to rename this parks. Now that we've got our new visualizer, we just need to change a couple of settings and we're golden. Now a park is going to be an area. So from our list, we don't really want a point. We don't want to want a line. Polygons are great, especially since we're going to be using a model to represent them with our bonus XP that we created in the last video. The first thing we're going to change is this layer name. Right now, it's targeting buildings, just like the buildings vector layer visualizer above it. But that's not what we're looking for. The layer name we're going to want is land use. And if you take a look at Mapbox Studio, it can show you all the different keys, and you can select it to show which data you want available. And that's where I got this key. So layer name is land use. And we're not going to worry about grouping the features or a collider or even a even an extrusion type. What we do want to worry about are the filters. So scroll down to the advanced section. And if that's not already expanded, go ahead and expand it. And then click Add New Empty underneath Filter. And I'm going to drag this out so you can see it a little better. And we're going to add a key. But before we do that, I actually want to go ahead and create the other part of this, just so you can see how important the filters are. So come back over here to your project inspector, and I'm going to right click on the POI XP bonus folder. Since that's really what we're adjusting here is an object related to it. So let's right click, go up to create, hover over map box, and then modifiers. And then we want to go down to the prefab modifier right here in between material and spawn. And we're just going to click on that and we're going to name this arc XP bonus. Now you'll notice that it's got an option for whether or not it's active, a prefab, and whether or not we should scale it down with the world. We're going to take our POI XP bonus and we're going to drag that into the prefab section. So now this is tied to that prefab. Let's go ahead and add this to our map and I'll show you what this does. So click on your map scroll all the way down to your vector visualizers and click on parks then come down and in this empty filter spot and for the moment we're actually going to take out this filter that we started to add and instead we're going to go down to the game object modifiers at the very bottom click add new empty and then we can take this modifier that we created and just drag it in and if we click on this circle It'll show us all of the available modifiers, and you'll see that there are a whole bunch of demos. So we can go through and take a look at those, or rather you can go through and take a look at those and see what each of them do and explore and maybe get some inspiration from that. But for now, we're just going to work with this Park XP bonus prefab modifier. Now that that's done, I'm going to resize this so we can see the screen, and then I'm going to press play. And now, if I scroll out, you'll see that the game screen is pretty much covered in these giant XP bonuses. And if I just start clicking them, I'm going to get a whole bunch of experience. And these are obviously way too huge. So let's stop running. I'm going to zoom back in a bit. And 
while the game was running, I happened to notice a bug. So let's open up the player script and go fix that real quick. Open the player folder underneath our models. Double click on player. And that will open up our IDE. Let's go down to the function add XP. And here we're setting an assignment and saying this.xp equals mathf.max zero and the XP being passed in. With that kind of logic, our player is never going to gain any levels. And you may have seen this forever ago, but I somehow missed it. So let's change that to a plus equals so that it just adds to the experience instead of overriding it. Now let's save that script and go back to Unity. Just to double check before we continue, I want to press play and make sure that this is working properly. So now that I've got an opportunity to grab a bajillion XP, well, really, I guess just somewhere in the neighborhood of 90. So I almost gained a level. Cool. But we see that the add XP function is now working properly. So we're good to go on that front. Now that that's fixed, let's go back to what we were originally doing. So the XP objects were kind of huge, like to a point of it being a little ridiculous. We need to fix that because that's definitely not usable for the game. Luckily enough, Mapbox provides an easy way to do that. Click on the park XP bonus modifier that we created, and we're going to take a look at this scale down with world option. It's just a checkbox, so let's click that. And if we run it again, we'll see that things have changed just a bit. Now, the XP is about the size that we expected. That's awesome. Basically, what happened here is when originally rendering, Mapbox didn't take into account the overall scope and scale of the world, and it just brought it in as an asset and it oversized things. Choosing the scale down with world will scale it down to the size of your map and follow suit of whatever this is scaled to. So now that we've got that done, we can click these and get experience. Perfect. Granted, it's not going to save right now because our player has no save functionality, but we'll get there. And one thing you may notice is this purple that's starting to creep up through our world. That is a bit of a glitch, but I know exactly why that's happening. So let's go take a look. Let's stop running the project, head back to map, and we'll slide down to the parks in the vector layer visualizer. And the reason that that's happening is because I was a little misleading earlier. I said that we wanted the primitive type to be a polygon. That was actually false. We want it to be a point in this case because we don't care about the actual body of the park and our experience bonuses are their own object. So this has no effect. So that was my bad. What we want to do instead is change it to a point. And now that that's a point, if we go ahead and run this, we'll see that the purple that was showing up because there was no material set when we were trying to turn it into a polygon is gone. It's no longer there. Perfect. That's what we were shooting for. Okay, awesome. This is where we wanted things to be. Perfect. And really, as far as doing some actual work and doing the code, and updating things in the editor, that only took a couple of minutes, if that. So that should give you some kind of idea of how easy it is to set up these kind of modifiers for objects generated at runtime through the vector layer visualizers. When I said they were powerful, I wasn't kidding. This little modifier just did a whole lot of work for us. But what about the filters? That part is just as easy. So let's click Add New Empty. And I'm going to drag this out so you can see. And for the key, we're just going to put in type. Now be advised, these values are case sensitive, both the key and the string value. So make sure you've got the right one. The key I want is type because I'm looking for the type of land use. And specifically, we want parks. So I'm just going to say type contains park. And that's it. I'm going to save and run the project. And now you should see that the number of XP boosts has decreased.
see, we've only got three now. And for this area, that's that's what's expected. That is expected behavior. Perfect. And that's how easy it is to filter our results. Let's stop running the project. And from this point, if we click on parks and go back down to the filters, at this point, we could continue to add filters and maybe switch it to all to fine tune things even further. The way I'd suggest you go about that if you want to add even more would be to reopen Mapbox Studio and check it out in there. And I'll show you why. If I head down to my browser and open up the Mapbox Studio map that I created for Pocket Droids Go, we can do some really quick narrowing down of our data. The way that we do that is if I scroll out just a bit so that I can see, there we go, about there, so everything's still visible. If I click on this land use park and then select select data, using the filters in Mapbox Studio, I can quickly see where everything is in the map in the current location. So you can just pick a sample area and kind of figure out what you're looking for. And this is a good way as you go through and enhance your game even further to decide whether there should be more areas or ways to help enhance the game for players who may not have all of the right stuff around them. And we can see the differences by shifting these filters. For example, if I come in and add a new filter value and say cemetery, well, I don't think it showed anything extra there because I don't know where the cemetery is here. So let's add a filter and we're just gonna say rock. Actually grass, grass is a good one. You may have noticed a couple more spots popped up. Let's remove those and leave it just at park the way we had it and go back to the style. Now I'm going to switch back to Unity. And we're going to go ahead and save and call this good. At this point, you should have a pretty good understanding of what these filters do, why they're important, and how they can be used to modify and enhance your game and really help give your users the experience you were going for. Great job following along. And I'm excited to move on with this. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.